the, this particular question, we again are going to try using both trigonometry and 1 and 60. And let's find out what's going to happen. This question is also a bit confusing with respect to the way it is framed. Uh, and it also also a rich question because it has additional information on airways, which you probably have, have stuff come across in your regulation uh, classes. What is the maximum difference between VOR beacons? designating the center line of an airway 10 nautical miles wide if the expected VOR bearing error is 5.5 degrees. So in this question you have two different VORs which designates an airway. So airways are just like roads um, over here, like highways, uh, which is designated using radio aviation aids, like it could be a VOR, NDB, or VOR, and VO1, and so on and so forth. And over here we have two different VORs, let's draw that. This is VOR alpha, right? And there's another VOR here, which I would name as VOR brown. This is not the naming technique of a VOR, this is just for the particular question, right? And now let me draw the airway that is kind of defined by these VORs. So if I connect these two VORs, you can see that the VOR A defines um, the airway using its 0 9 0 radial and VOR B defines the same airway using its 2 7 0 degree radial which means an aircraft will move out of 0 9 uh, out of VOR A on 0 9 0 radial and would come in bound to VOR B on its 2 7 0 radial that is how the VORs define the uh, define the airway let me get rid of these radials because that is not much required here Right. So with the understanding from the previous question, what uh, let's suppose this question here. Um, so the airway is kind of uh, defined by the VORs and what they have told is that what is the maximum distance between VOR beacons. So I have to find out this distance between VOR A and VOR B. So uh, they are asking pretty much of this distance here. From VOR A all the way to VOR B, what would be the distance? And what they have given additionally is that they define center line of an airway which is 10 nautical miles wide straight in. Now this is the standard ICAO um, recommended width of an, of an airway. So it's five, uh, it's 10 nautical miles wide, which means it is five nautical miles either side of the designated center line of the of the airway. Now let's let's designate that here. So the upper boundary and the lower boundary. Upper and bound, lower in the sense for the, for the convenience of the diagram here, it's basically the lateral boundaries over here, right? And now, this whole distance is what is given as 10 nautical mile, which is the standard width of, of an airway, which means that one of the, one of the uh, sides of the airway is definitely going to be 5 nautical miles on, on either sides. It's 5 nautical miles on on either sides basically. Now you have to find out what is the maximum distance these VOR beacons could be uh, for the airway to be 10 nautical miles wide if the expected VOR bearing error is 5.5 degrees. Now, this means that anywhere out of 5.5 degrees of the of the respective VORs you will go out of the airway. So if you want to stay within the airway you probably have to be within this width. If you kind of move out of it you are out of the airway. So for that, what should be the maximum radius between which you should be for from VOR A or from VOR B, uh, for which the bearing error is a maximum of 5.5 5 degrees, which is plus 5 degree and minus 5 degree. Let's define those radius here. So to define those radius, let's kind of define the radius which we are already drawn. So I'm looking at VOR A specifically here and we will then correlate that to VOR B. So the, air, the airway is defined by the zero nine or zero degree radial from the VOR A and two seven zero degrees radial from the VOR uh, VOR B. Right. So uh, just want to want to make a hint that I believe you have a basic understanding about VOR. Let me see if we can do theoretical um, theory sessions of VOR a bit bit later. But as I said at the moment, I'm, I'm quite occupied with my regular sessions that. Um, doing problems is much more easier for me because I, I take it directly from my classes so I record it straight and I don't have to spend extra time on that but these are recorded sessions uh, apart from my classes all right so we are a let's define the two radius possibly that we can have is one right here right 
and the other radial has all right so two different radials from VOR A now having the VOR uh, expected VOR bearing error to be 5.5 degrees so that is over here 5.5 so it's going to be minus 5.5 degrees and this would be plus 5.5 degrees therefore uh, the expected radio the, the the airway radial should be 090 these radials would be 84 decimal 5 degrees and this would be 95 decimal 5 degrees all right perfect now if the aircraft is moving out on a radial of 090 and if it is anywhere between 84 decimal 5 or 95 decimal 5 as it navigates it is still within the uh, permissible airway boundary right now similarly let's define the radius from vorb as well so we get the diagram a bit down so vorb over here so these are the other two radials from vorb beyond which you'll be moving out of the out of the airway so this is again plus 5.5 degrees of error and you have minus 5.5 degrees of error and since you're coming in bound on the 270 radial here these radials would be 270 plus 5.5 that is 275 decimal 5 degrees radial and uh, 270 minus 5.5 that is 264 decimal 5 degrees of radial right now these the intersection of these radials kind of defines the the five nautical mile uh, either side boundary of the airway now uh, you're asked to find out what the what should be the maximum distance between the vor beacons designating center line of the airway let's find out so what are we trying to find out here we're trying to look at this triangle here a small triangle we know what the distance of is it's five nautical mile for a standard 10 nautical mile wide airway we have the kind of tracker which is minus 5.5 degrees uh, if we can find out the distance from the VOR up till here and if you can double it that's going to be the maximum permissible distance between the two VORs now again let's do the same question using both the methods method number one is trigonometry using the trig function and uh, let's find out so you're looking at this particular triangle here and let's defer, try to find the triangle by the VOR on one side and you have point C so O here and you have C we can triangle AOC we can apply the function tan theta again here because we are playing around with opposite and adjacent sides so tan theta is equal to opposite side divided by adjacent side the same equation the same same method which we used in the previous question now that is tan theta the theta is the maximum permissible error which is given as five decimal five degrees and that is equal to the opposite side over here is the five nautical mile side oops yeah right here five nautical miles divided by adjacent side is what is required Therefore, the adjacent side, which is AO, is equal to 5 nautical miles divided by tan 5 decimal 5 degrees. Let's quickly grab your scientific and find out it's 5 divided by tan of 5.5. Again, make sure your calculator is in the degree mode and that's going to give you 59 decimal 926 nautical miles always make sure you use the answer function to not round this off even though i have only three decimal places here keep the answer straight there in your calculator and what you can do is you can press the answer there and multiply the two and you get the distance the vor to the vor distance to be one not three decimal eight five and now you can think about rounding it off because the final answer to one zero four for nautical miles the maximum distance between the VOR that is expected for the aircraft to stay within these uh, 10 nautical mile, nautical mile boundary 
Okay. So the distance between VOR A and VOR B is 104 nautical miles. Now what this means is that, say for example, if, let me take this VOR into the picture, which means the distance is kind of brought less than 104 degrees. Hmm, let's we'll see what happened here. Uh, now if I need an airway of, so the airway kind of shrunk all the way down, right? The, the airway that, that these radials could define is now so much wide, which means it is definitely not 10 nautical miles. Now if I need the ICAO recommended 10 nautical mile airway, I probably have to find, take for example, if I take, so, so I probably have to shift this particular radial over to and get the intersection done here and see what happens to the error uh, eventually. It increased from 5.5 .5 degrees, uh, which is again out of the permissible limits. And therefore, you will not be able to get 10 nautical mile uh, wide airway uh, with 5.5 .5 degrees of uh, permissible accuracy if the VORs are any any anywhere less than 105 nautical miles apart. Let's see the same scenario the other way around. Let's kind of move the uh, VORs away let's take the view over here and let's kind of move it all the way out hmm see what happened now the viewers kind of define a wider um, airway and now to bring the airways back to the standard 10 nautical miles I'll have to shift one of these radials possibly from the uh, from the VOR a all the way down to here and from here all the way down straight here now this is kind of kind of recommendable uh, uh, on the first glance because now we can see that the the error kind of reduced uh, from 5.5 .5 to the lesser value but again we have a standard uh, recommended maximum error of 5.5 .5, so you have to stay within that limit so so the aircraft could navigate at ease uh, and therefore keeping 5.5 .5 as the error uh, permissible you cannot have a, an airway of 10 nautical miles if the VOR is any further closer or away than 104 nautical miles I hope that part of the the system is actually clear to you now let's get back to our original figure that's required that's right here the distance between VOR A and VOR B uh, using the trigonometric function is 104 nautical miles now just like before let's find out the same using the 1 and 60 because we have a right angle triangle here so we can apply 160 and we have a track error or the permissible limit of 5.5 degrees which is way less than 20 degree limit of the 160 which means you can use 160 again right so let's find out the second method let's find out using the second method which is method 2 using 1 in 60 perfect Using 160, we are looking at this triangle again, A, O, C, right angle at O here. And the distance off is 5 nautical miles. Distance to go is what we need to find out. And we have the so-called track error as 5.5 degrees. So the track error is equal to distance off by distance gone into 60. As I told you, this is a very, very strong tool in the aircraft, but it's not very accurate right so track error is 5.5 distance off is 5 nautical miles distance gone or to go is what you want to find out it is 60. so distance gone is equal to 5 nautical miles into 60 divided by 5.5 degrees let's find out 5 into 60 divided by 5 decimal 5 that's 54 decimal 545 nautical miles and what we need to find out is the distance between the VOR so it's a VOR, VOR distance and that's going to be double of this so multiply the two is 109 decimal 09 I can just approximate this to 109 nautical miles so again look at, the, look at both the answers now the answer from 160 is 109 nautical miles and the answer from trigonometry is 104 nautical miles. Do you see the obvious difference here of 5 nautical miles? And that is because you have a larger track error of 5.5 as against the previous question where you had just one degree of track error. And that's why the answers which you got through uh, trigonometric method and, uh, and 160 was relatively the same. 5.3.5 and 3.3. But 
over here since you have a larger tracker you see how the answer from 160 kind of veers off very very slowly from the exact answer through uh, the trigonometric function so again this 104 is the is the exact answer uh, if you if you go for the accurate one uh, as compared to 109 now let's find look at the options here because that is what defines what to choose we have 120 which is obviously not the case uh, which is 60 which is 54 all of them are like like no no now we only have 109 nautical mile that is that is anywhere closer to these two options right so it's exactly what 160 is giving you in such cases when there is no clash and 160 is giving you a happier option just go with that so 109 is the answer right if you had an option like 105 or sorry 104 uh, then you probably should go with 104 whenever there's a clash always go with the uh, with trigonometric answer because that is definitely more accurate than 160. well that is, now you understood why i kept these two questions back to back because it is kind of comparing the same question in two different methods and trying to figure out uh, what the answer would be this has confused people around and that is why i thought of putting this question up on what should we do should we do trigonometry using trigonometric function of tan theta should we do really 160 you can do both that's fine uh, what is there the option and what is more approximated towards um, the, the more accurate answer is definitely definitely the best one to pick up as long as whenever, whenever there's a clash all right that's it uh, if you are kind of happy with this question let's go to another one now this is not connected to what we just did this is a different uh different uh genre right question number 25 let's see this